So now that we have essentially a working application, the one thing I wanted us to explore is how we can potentially optimize it slightly. So one of the one of the really good guides on the developer.android.com uh, website talks about, among other things, designing for performance and underneath specifically talks about some JNI tips. So one of the sections on their native libraries talks about this JNI on load function. And so uh, what this will allow us to do is to, if we choose to implement our code in C++, um, have, um, allow us to execute, or I should say pre-register our functions uh, for, uh, with the Delphic virtual machine um, as soon as our library is loaded as opposed to waiting until the first time our, our code is used because what we don't know is until our, our, our functions are first used whether or not we have uh, correctly mapped names from the function method names onto function names. Specifically, let me let me kind of explain. So here, um, you know, this fiblib function, uh, or I should say, class has these uh, this method. For example, native static long fib nr, and of course, this one over here has the same sort of method. You know, call Murakana kind of Android blah 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 fib nr. Um, the name of this function it has to exactly match the name of this class, the package, and the name of this function. Uh, if it doesn't, it will not work. And from the problem is we'll, we'll only find out that it doesn't work the first time we try to use it. Um, and at that point, it will be essentially, uh, um, you know, maybe too late. We, it's not something that we can preemptively test for. So what Andrea allows us to do is to actually uh, pre-register these functions, um, and essentially think of them as pre-bind them um, before they're actually even used the first time. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy, make a copy of this C program, and I'm going to call this CPP, for example. So just, the uh, you know, uh, create a, a, a C++ version of this. So um, here we go. Um, and so now what I'll do inside of I'm going to close this original file and I'm going to open this this other file up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to using in C++ I'm going to go and uh, first of all I don't need this anymore this header file. Um, instead what I'll do is from this header file I'll just take the 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 jni.h so that I do need but this entire file can go away in fact that you know I can say I don't need it anymore and now I'm gonna go um, as opposed to using this long you know naming convention that comes from Java because you know C doesn't have namespaces I'm not actually gonna use C++ namespace uh, support so name space for example com maracana android uh, Fibonacci native. In fact, this this it just happens to be something that I choose to do. It doesn't even have to match what I I have um, in my Java classes. So let's go. Let's just go and have this kind of nicely indented. Um, this um, this entire thing no longer has to be exported this way. Um, so I'm actually going to get rid of this altogether. Um, this is still going to return a J long, but um, this doesn't have to be a JNI call. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say this is a static function. Um, so essentially, it's private. It's not exported anywhere. And in fact, this becomes redundant. I can actually call this whatever I want to. And I can even simplify and make this look, uh, you know, look slightly in just in one line. Okay. So this I'm going to indent. This I'm going to indent. This I'm going to indent. Okay. So far, so good. Um, same thing I'm going to do over here. This becomes a static so static j long also has um i also have to go and um, just fix something um i'm gonna get rid of this um this becomes just an ni like just like we had before um i can go and move this up above and i'm just gonna go and indent all of this slightly Nothing too exciting, really. They're not changing the actual code, um, at least not how uh, it behaves. And now I can go and close this namespace. So I'm just going to go down here and close the namespace. So now, of course, if I were just to compile it like this, how will the Dalvik ever be able to find these functions? Especially, you know, A, they have names that don't match anything and B, they are static, so they're not exported. So this is one last thing I'm going to do, is I'm actually going to create a mapping. 
So specifically, I'm going to create a static uh, array of JNI native method. So actually method. Uh, and this I'm just going to call it a method underscore table, for example, like this. And this is going to essentially define a, a collection, or I should say an array of these JNI methods, each of which is going to essentially map a Java name, a uh, method name onto my function, my private function. It will act as a pointer to the function. So here we go. First, I'm going to go and define a, the name of the Java method. So for example, fibnr. Okay? This is the name that was used right here, fibnr. Then I'm going to say that this method maps onto a method or sorry, I should say, this method that I'm, that I'm, that I'm uh, searching for by name, I also have to specify its type because Java supports method overloading, and so therefore I have to specify exactly which method I'm, I, I mean. Now, the way you express types is somewhat weird and it seems cryptic, um, but essentially what it means, it's, it's, it, I'm using the syntax that actually comes from JNI. It's defined right here. And if you see, uh, for example, when you're defining signatures, if you see a J, that is referring to a long. If you see an F, referring to a float. If you see, you know, a square bracket in front of something, that means referring to an array of that. If you see an L followed by a fully qualified class, followed by a semicolon, that's referring to a fully qualified class. So essentially what I'm saying here is I am looking for a Java method called fibnr that takes a j, again, j being a long, and returns a j, okay? Um, that's, that's, again, just because of the Java support for overloading, I have to be explicit as to which method I'm actually referring to. And I'm now going to uh, essentially make this be a pointer to the fibnr function that I've previously created, which is the one over here. I'm essentially pointing from a logical Java name to an actual function name. That's my first uh, uh, entry in this table. The next entry is going to be it's pretty much similar, similar sort of thing, ni, j, j, because it also takes in a, in a, a long, returns a long, and then this is going to point to this function right here, so I'm just going to say ni. That's it. I now have essentially a little table that describes how will Java methods map onto these static functions, essentially static functions through these function pointers. Okay, now here's one, the next thing I want to do. Now I want to register these. So I'm going to say using namespace, um, and in fact, I'm just going to be lazy and copy the namespace down below. Okay, and now I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to build a static, uh, or sorry, an extern um, C uh, function so um, that returns a J int. In fact, it could just return an int. That's called JNI on load. In fact, rather than type all of this, I'm going to be lazy and just copy this from here, like so. So copy and paste. Um, I don't have to say um, extern. Um, I like to uh, simply, you know, for consistency, it would work either way uh, because it get because it gets exported anyways. Uh, but what I'm doing here is I'm creating a special function that has a special name that will automatically be invoked by Dalvik virtual machine or any Java virtual machine for that matter when the environment is for or when this library is first loaded. And so the whole purpose of what I'm doing here is so that I can actually connect my um, or, or um, execute on this mapping on the load of my library rather than wait until the first use. Okay, so here's, here's basically what I'm going to do. So now that I have uh, um, the environment, okay, um, I'm going to go like this and say else... Um, I need to go on, uh, on grab my class. So how do I actually grab the class? Um, J class equals or class equals uh, environment um, env find class by a particular name. Well, what's the name of my class? Um, well, the name of my class is going to be, um, let's take a look. It's this one. 
Okay. Now, why am I looking for a class? The, uh, the purpose here is so that I can go and point. So let's go down below, uh, go like this. And so that I can go and say, when you register these methods, unfortunately here, they're all slashes, not dots. When you register, and then finally, fib, fib, lib. When you register these, these functions, or I guess methods to functions, I need to tell the system as to wh what it'll be, what will register it on. Okay, so basically what I'm doing here is I'm looking for this class by this particular name. Okay, I'm going to assume that this class exists. Well, I should, I should not assume. I should just go and say, well, if, um, you know, class, if it doesn't exist, we're going to obviously have a problem. Um, so if it exists, I'm going to go and register the native method. So I'm going to say env, whoops, env, um, uh, register natives okay on this class from this table right so remember how i have this table that i built over here so i'm going to have from from this table and i have to give it the size of the table um uh, so the number of elements in the table i can just say two or i can say size of this table divided by size of you know the first element from this table for example right or i could just say the size of uh, the, 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 the J and I native methods. Anyway, what this will do, it will essentially tell the environment, the J and I environment, um, that we are going to look for these methods on this class and register those methods to point to essentially the following functions. So when these methods are requested to run, these functions execute instead. So the benefit of this is we here do this once, we do it at the startup. If there's a problem, um, essentially we deal with that problem right away. We don't have to worry about, uh, you know, uh, that problem becoming, you know, a, a, a linkage error down below. So now that we've done this, we would want to go and get rid of our class. We don't really need the ENV, um, you know, a local reference to this class. So we say delete um, local ref and class and so now we can say return zero we're done um, otherwise of course we you know since there was a problem we're just going to say return i don't know minus one or something like that to indicate that we weren't able to actually uh, complete this properly um, this actually returns zero i should say uh, we shouldn't return zero we should just return uh, the actual version so i'm going to change this to say return the jni version and now we are, should be done, okay? Well, at least with this code. So ultimately, the benefit is all the registration uh, and mapping happens uh, sooner rather than later. So to test this out, I'm gonna go to my make file. I'm gonna change this to be CPP, right? Because I now have a new one. This file and this file, these two files are actually now being ignored. They're not used for anything. The CPP file is not at all looking at the, the header file. And so let's see if I did everything correctly, I should be able to um, essentially get my code to work. So let's try clean and let's do an NDK build and it compiles. So that's promising. Um, now I can go over here and uh, refresh and now I can go and rerun. Okay. So what we'll see is, again, we're going to go over here and type adb logcat, logcat. Um, when our code first runs, uh, at least when, when it first loads, it'll actually execute the on load and it will be able to bind to everything earlier rather than later. So let's give this a shot. Like, for example, 15 on nr, hit this, it executes it. Um, it doesn't, it, so it's telling you here that it's trying to load it. And right now um, it is, it has loaded it and actually it has already executed the on uh, bind method or I should say on load method it has bound all of the, all of these. So let me go back to show it to you. So it has already executed this on load. It has already bound uh, or found our class, registered all the natives. 
um, and then you know allowed us to actually run whatever whatever function we actually ran. But ultimately, this is going to be slightly faster and slightly better in terms of uh, you know being able to identify er errors early rather than wait for them to happen later. Um, and the reason why I wa wanted to show this is while the the JNI way, uh, which is using the the I should say Java age uh, uh, function to create a header file, which is what we what we got what we got here, right? Uh, and then we also uh, uh, built the C file, right, to, to support it and using this mapping, you know, using the naming convention essentially. While that gets the job done, um, this is not how, for example, Android, its own JNI uh, layers uh, do it. Pretty much all of Android is built this way instead using C++ files that, you know, they don't necessarily do much C++ per se. Uh, there's not, you know, there's nothing object oriented here. Um, it's still really pure, almost pure C, C code. But nevertheless, they're able to pre-register everything and, and detect errors and, and sort of run at slightly faster uh, performance than, than if they did it uh, using the R initial approach. So just coming back to this diagram um, in this preview, you'll notice that you know, if we do do this, do do it this way, we essentially no longer need to do this anymore, uh, and we we are now building not a C but a C plus uh, plus source file. The rest of it obviously remains the same. So just to summarize, I mean, what we did here is we just went over a very small you know subset of what NDK is capable of, um, but. Essentially, NDK enables JNI. JNI enables us to call into native li native native code. Native code is there to help us, you know, uh, essentially take advantage of some legacy code we've already written or optimize parts of our application for performance. Um, Android has a whole bunch of APIs, uh, native APIs that we could take advantage of. So if you scroll over here, you'll see actually all those APIs. Uh, or list of those APIs. We could try to use other sorts of system libraries, uh, but these are not necessarily guaranteed to be stable and may change, so therefore our code may break. Um, and ultimately, you know, we should probably stick to these. We also saw that there are two ways of getting this done. Uh, one was to, you know, build a native library, indicate native methods, compile it, extract the header file, implement the header file, create a make file, optionally create an application MK file, compile into a dynamic library using NDK build, then build a client app that actually uses this Java class, which then in the, you know, loads the dynamic library and completes the picture. Um, in general, you should not use NDK uh, just because you prefer to code in C and C++. It's not the most optimal way of building Android applications because of the increased complexity. Um, like, for example, your applications may become more brittle because memory management is no longer done automatically. Um, and, of course, they may become less secure because of the also memory management. Uh, but ultimately, at least our applications are, you know, able to take advantage of code we we might have already written and you know we may be able to at least uh, hand optimize code for increased performance anyway i hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, my, the code will be uh, available online i'll post a link to it and uh, good luck and enjoy uh, coding in ndk thanks for joining me i hope you enjoyed the screencast and you learned something new about the android native development kit and that you'll be able to take advantage of it in your future projects i invite you to come to Morakana's stream for more educational tutorials, videos, screencasts on Android, but also on other open source technologies.